There have been many amazing developments recently from an early every camera manufacturer. It's an exciting time for all camera fans, with new sensor technology and faster processors are making a step change in camera performance and most brands have seen big advances. It's just a matter of timing that differs. So what brought this about? And will it last? And what might be in store in the near future? Let's look into that. Hi, I'm Tom and welcome to Rumour Has It. It seems each company is leapfrogging each other at the moment. The Canon R5, the Sony A1, the Nikon Z7, and who'll be next? Panasonic and the rumoured WoW camera? Or maybe the Canon R1, rumoured to be above all others? So let's look at these sensors and processors that are making all the difference. The main enablers for these advances are the increasingly small scale of the integrated circuits. From 10 nanometers not so long ago, to 7 nanometers, 5 nanometers, and now 3 nanometers. Each reduction in scale brings power savings and speed gains, and this is something that has revolutionized mobile devices from Samsung and Apple. And now laptops like the M1 MacBooks from Apple. As companies like Samsung and Apple move to the next level of this tech, which is 3 nanometers, it frees up capacity on other equipment, like the 10 nanometer lines and the 7 nanometer lines. This manufacturing equipment has effectively been paid for and the costs absorbed, and now it can be used for lower volume, lower cost products like camera processors. Sensors also benefit from technology like start sensors. An AMD made great advances in computer CPUs by stacking cores. Advances made in this tech roll over into other markets like miniaturization, stacking techniques, layering and the associated speed benefits that have enabled sensor readout speeds to fall, effectively removing rolling shutter effect and eliminating the need for a mechanical shutter. Obviously Nikon were listening to Elon Musk who coined the phrase, the best part is no part. Now that sensor readout speeds are fast enough, this enables manufacturers to remove the mechanical shutter, which in turn will improve reliability and increase the life of the camera. The sensor and processor changes might plateau for a while though. We will see further tweaks to what's possible, but the investments made in research and development of these new sensors will need to be paid back in camera sales. So what will come next? Is there other technology advances elsewhere that could bleed over into the camera industry? The most obvious place we could see this coming from are mobile phones. Let's look at these areas and the benefits they could bring. First of all, security. Current camera security is pitifully bad. It's all too easy to fall victim to theft and all too easy for the perpetrator to move on the stolen goods. Serial numbers of bodies and lenses are rarely recorded or registered, and the camera will work in the hands of anyone, though badly in some. Yet the tech required to solve this issue already exists. Fingerprint scanning, face recognition, location geofencing, and Find My Device apps are all commonplace in mobile devices. Why not cameras? Lenses could be registered to a body and rendered useless unless paired with another body. Any attempt at pairing would require authorization of the owner. This could well be done via a mobile device app. Can you point out any pitfalls with that idea? That couldn't be easily solved? Now looking at social media. Another area barely scratched by the camera industry is social media. Current attempts to share images display images and upload images are fairly clunky and there's no reason for this. The knowledge and tech exists. Many professionals may scoff at this, but the next generation will expect features like AirPlay and the ability to share images with social media apps. For this to happen, software needs to be better written and connectivity needs to be improved. Current attempts show a complete lack of interest or ability by most camera brands. It should be possible to link social media apps on device 
where JPEGs could be instantly shared and this would of course be optional. Then looking at connectivity. Wireless tethering to display devices is also possible and doesn't need to be as messy as complicated as existing attempts. Just look at how AirPlay works on Apple devices to see how things could be better here. The current Wi-Fi capabilities on most cameras is in the Stone Age. It should be possible to improve this and make pairing easier, or to build in AirPlay or Allcast support. This could also be used and adapted to stream webcams. The technology has been leased to third parties like TV manufacturers for a while now, so why not camera manufacturers? Now looking at batteries. Of course some of these features would drain battery power, but I'm sure there are many, like me, that find it hard to understand the lack of real improvement in camera batteries, especially when technology exists to give us all day batteries, which can be packaged in a mobile device. At the very least we should be able to operate the camera while charging. Some cameras still don't allow that. Looking at you, Canon. Now we'll look at firmware. Camera embedded code which runs under the hood is mostly written in C. But higher level code, like the operating system, could easily be Android or similar. And indeed it's been done before. Just look at the young new YN450. But the battery drains fast and the startup times do not agree with the user expectations of cameras. However, all existing camera manufacturers could benefit from better apps and additional functionality. It seems camera manufacturers don't have the time or resource to make worthwhile apps. Certainly when you look at what Android and iOS apps are capable of in the hands of a good developer, it's obvious the camera companies are missing a trick here. Perhaps they should outsource their apps to a specialist developer. Or maybe Samsung should get back in the camera business. So which camera company will make the breakthrough first and bring improved functionality to our cameras? And is anyone actually trying? Well, here's a quick review of the progress currently being made. Camera security actually exists in the form of the Phase 1 XF camera. They have three levels of security and the top level allows you to lock the entire camera, which can only be unlocked by entering a code. After five incorrect tries, the camera will shut off and you need to contact the manufacturers to get a master unlock code. This shows what is currently possible, but also with some development, it could easily be made to go further. Canon, Sony and others have improved social media integration in cameras like the M50 Mark II and the Sony a 4 but these are just the first steps. Both are tethered options, though the Sony does have code inbuilt which allows webcam access without a driver running on the laptop or PC. Canon were the first to have this webcam feature, but it relies on the driver running on a program in the background. So who is your bet between the major camera brands to make this big breakthrough? And where will it be? Security, social media, connectivity, firmware, or maybe just a decent app? I've been heartened by the big jump in subscription recently, and it's helping me achieve the 500 target I have for the end of the year. Hopefully I'll make it. Why not try this video next which YouTube thinks will interest you, or perhaps this one might suit you better. And thanks for watching, rumour has it. I hope you'll be back soon.